Oh, so that's that's a little bit challenging when it comes to making the cup. You didn't have any water, man. Oh, uh, don't use that water. Where were you using from? This one. Good water helps make good coffee. Very much so. You have to think that uh, water is a primary component of uh, the cup of coffee you're making. So if you have water that doesn't taste good to start with, you're not going to have coffee that tastes very good. So, very big influence right there. Now, since I didn't actually have water that was ready to go, I'm actually not even going to use coffee that I just ground. Um, <laughs> coffee has so many uh, volatile aromatics that it's, as soon as you grind, it's right away it's releasing a lot of flavor that you could capture if you brew it right away. So I'm actually just going to discard that. Now, do you work for one of the coffee shops, or do you work with one of the coffee suppliers? Uh, I work for uh, other brother roasters. I'm the, ro the roaster for them. So. Okay. But I do a lot of brewing at home. Oh, yeah. Lots of brewing. Now, if you're going to work for a roaster, it pays to know what you're doing as well. Oh, yeah. All right. So what's the name of your blog? Uh, it's called Dining with Donald. Dining with Donald? Yeah. Well, get over that and check that out. Extraction methods shown here. Now, where is Other Brothers located? We're based out of Winkler. Okay. Yeah, we've been roasting for, I personally have been roasting with them for about six months. Um, they've been OBR in general. I think it's. About two years that we've been we've been going, mm -hmm. so it's been nice. It's been good to watch the coffee scene in Manitoba really, really start to explode in the past couple of years. And a lot of growth, lots of people discovering that you know coffee can be a lot better than you know, the standard supermarket yes. uh, yeah. stuff that's available. So, yeah. do you have any questions? Uh, one question, like the you've got a copper. Yep. Uh, well, it's, uh, it has a copper finish. Finish. Okay. It's actually, it's actually stainless steel. Mm -hmm. So stainless steel is a, is great for brewing. It doesn't uh, doesn't tend to impart any flavors while you're brewing. Oh, yeah. And then uh, you know the copper on the outside is because it looks pretty. Right? It looks pretty. <laughs> so it doesn't uh, does it affect the heating of it at all or? Uh, not with, with this particularly. Um, copper isn't. Copper isn't necessarily the, the greatest material for for brewing with because it one it absorbs heat energy very quickly mm -hmm. and then on the other it also disperses that heat energy very quickly so you can cool off your water um, and when you're looking at things like uh, 
you know the Bonavita kettle. This is what I use at home. Okay. You, it's a variable temperature kettle, so you can you can set the brewing parameters uh, based on the coffee you're using. Some coffees respond well to one temperature, whereas uh, different coffee might might be better off brewed even as much little as two degrees less or more. It makes has a large impact. So the the big goal is temperature stability when you're brewing, and that's going to give you a, a lot more consistency in the cup. Yeah, this is for anybody who wants to get into doing single cup brewing at home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, having a variable temp kettle is a nice little plus, but even even just the kettle that you have, as long as you're able to pour uh, in a controlled manner, the right. thing to start. Actually, my first um, experience with pour over brewing at home, um, my wife wasn't sure if I would. Uh, you properly utilize a uh, pour over device like any one of these. So, she, uh, what I did to, to prove to her that I was kind of committed to that way of brewing, I actually just got a funnel. And I, I cut the bottom off of the funnel and I got the paper filters, and that's why I started doing single cup brewing with it. And, uh, and I haven't stopped. And I, I still have a, a drip, a regular drip coffee maker at home that I pull out maybe once a year if we have a lot of people there. Right. But other than that, it's, it's always single cup. And, you know, I, I guess the idea behind that, you're drinking less coffee, but you're drinking better coffee. It's, it's sort of my mentality. Right? Yeah, no, that makes and probably for most people, less coffee is actually better as well. Probably a little less shaky. Yeah. You might have better uh, better writing skills. If I wasn't shaking so much. It's almost there. So what I'm going to do is once the uh, my water is up to temperature, mm -hmm. I'll rinse my filter. The, there's two reasons you want to do that. One is you're going to uh, rinse any papery taste from the filter away. And second, you're going to preheat the, what you're brewing. So you're going to get more of that temperature. Right. I find that the preheating the brewing device is a little more important for heavier brewers. Like, there's this is the same brewer. Uh, right. So this is a ceramic model, whereas this is a stainless steel model. The ceramics. Well, what is it? Uh, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, I just back for myself. Here. I prefer uh, a ceramic over a metal or a glass over a metal, mm -hmm. just because once you heat it up, you do have a lot more heat retention. Right. So, yeah. But there's lots of different materials, kind of based on preference. All right. Then. Almost there. Almost there. So, um, so you go up to the, do you go to the hundred in Celsius, like the two? Um, in Celsius, I do everything in Fahrenheit. I don't know why. Because um, I'm, I'm just comparing. Because yeah, it's, it's going to be about 98 degrees Celsius. Okay. Yeah, in Fahrenheit, we know this one that's going to be set to 204 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Because so. the the earlier coffee I tried was set on 96. Oh, okay. For the yeah. thing. So. Yeah. So. I think that's and that was that was for this Chemex over here. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay, we are ready to go here. So now I'm going to grind. And while that's grinding, I'll give a quick pre rinse. Use a timer either on my phone or some scales they have a timer built in. Right. Um, 
I think this, this one actually has the timer built in. Yeah, this one does. I don't have the bottom at home, so I'm not going to fuss around with that. I'm just going to use what I know. So we're going to do a... Uh, we're going to saturate the grounds initially. With about 40 to 50 grams of water. And we're going to let that go for about 30 seconds. And that gives us a, a degassing period. Uh, a lot of people call it blue because, right. as you can see here, the coffee actually has puffed up. And that's because there's a large dispersion of CO2 from the roasting process that's still in the coffee. Um, you want to get rid of that CO2 because sometimes it can add a bit of a metallic taste to the coffee. And it's obviously not something you want. You want it sweet, you want it and clean. So, we got 30 seconds here. So, now I'm going to add some more water. I'm going to add about 50 grams at a time. We need a little bit of a stir. Not everybody stirs. I like to stir because it, um, I can make sure that all my, there's no pockets of dry grounds. That's going to stir. And you want to do it in nice, very controlled circular motions. Um, if you pour too fast, you have water that will shoot through all the grounds to the bottom of the filter. Right. And it will just come out before it's had time to uh, you know, really saturate with the uh, coffee. Now, the gentleman who made it before, he, he prefers the concentric circle approach. Yeah, yeah, just kind of working from the inside to the out, back to the inside. I do very much the same. Um, one thing I do that's a little bit different is I like to come back around the very outside of the bed of grounds um, because there's always a bit of a wall of coffee that's hung up, and I want to make sure everything's saturated at the same time. Right. And then I work to the middle to get everything worked in. So I add water um, and then I'll let the water that I added pass through just to a certain point where I can start to see the top of the coffee. Right. And then I add more. You don't want to let the bed of grounds get dry because um, you're it's just one consistent and even. And that way you're always adding you know some fresh heat to make sure your temperature stays where you want it. Okay, so we're about two and a half minutes worth of brewing, and it be about 20 seconds or so for the rest of the water to come fully through the grounds, and that's right where you want it. Two and a half to three minutes for brewing for, for a V60 is, is kind of the ideal spot. I'm going to get some more water. We'll have to get some more water. I always like to preheat my preheat my mugs. <laughs> I like my coffee to stay as hot as possible for as long as possible, but sometimes if I'm in a bit of a hurry, I'll just pour the coffee into a cold mug so I can drink it really quick. Right, yeah. Sometimes it's more important to get the caffeine yeah, than the, the flavor. It's like...
tricky part. Can I actually film myself drinking? So how's that for you? That's good. Good? What do you notice uh, with this brewing method compared to the Chemex? This has a bit more of a fuller taste. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the Chemex, when you're using a paper filter, it, um, it, it, it holds back a bit more dissolved solids than um, the thinner paper filter of the V60, um, and it allows a lot more clarity to shine through. So if you have a coffee, like a Yerga Chefe, it they're known for their bright floral notes, their bright fruit notes, uh, tea notes even, uh, and, and you, when you really want those to shine through, you're definitely going to want to use something that's going to provide a lot of clarity. Right. If you're after, um, you know, if you like those chocolate nut earthy tones, then you want something that's going to allow more body, like a thinner filter, V60, French press, right. even an arrow press is wonderful for uh, for that. And uh, there, there's always, there's a brewing method for everyone's taste. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about um, single cup brewing, is you can tailor your coffee experience uh, to get whatever you want. So. And that's what I noticed about this, the sort of the deeper earthy tones, which is, yeah. it's, is more to my liking. That's more the oh, okay. flavor. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, glad you enjoy your coffee. I need to track down some more water so we can make some more. Sure. Um.